Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking. Before we get to today's video, I want to give a massive thanks to our sponsor, which is Think, and showcase some of their really cool mess-free gun cleaning solutions. These gun cleaning kits include applicators, which allows you to clean parts of your guns other kits will not. For example, just add your favorite CLP and use the 67H and 88G applicators to clean your receivers. The 32KS allows you to clean your barrel. 60BP allows you to clean the trigger assembly and use the 86AC to clean the locking lug. These kits are easy to use, mess-free, and 100% made in the United States. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check them out and they're available on Amazon. Nice. Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking. First off, sorry, I know, crap audio. We're under a canopy and it's raining. I left the house today thinking it was gonna hit a high of like mid 90s and it was gonna be really sunny. So that's why I brought the canopy. As we get out to the ranch about an hour from my house, absolutely just pisses down and there's thunder. So now I use the canopy, which was for the sun, for the rain. So this is Texas in June, so surprise, surprise. Uh, but I wanna make a video about long range, which is always fun, you guys seem to like it. But subject on this, as you can tell from the title, is I'm going more specific on budget friendly setups. Uh, there's only one here that's not quite, quite budget friendly. The rifle is, but the optic isn't. Then there's two, a uh, semi-auto and a bolt action, both in 6.5 Creedmoor that are pretty budget friendly actually. Before you say anything, yes, I know the optic is not budget in this one, but the other ones are, I promise. This is a Palmetto State Armory PA-10 in 308. I believe this one's got the 18 inch barrel, stainless steel, um, one in 10 twist. From my experience, it's very, very accurate. And I put a bunch of different kind of ammo through it. Um, comes from the factory with uh, PSA's own two-stage match trigger. I bought another trigger to put in it, but not until I felt this, I realized it is good to go. I will say I added some FDE Magpul parts and then paid to get it Cerakoted in FDE. So as far as how much money I have into it, not as budget, but this one for a while used to be under $1,000 with a good trigger, adjustable gas block from the factory so you could run it reliably with the suppressor. This one here happens to be, like I said, in 308. So yeah, I kitted it out a little differently, but the base rifle does start, or at least it did, under $1,000. Razor HD uh, Gen 2 from Vortex. This one's a 3 to 18 by 50. Yeah, that's not quite economic and budget friendly, but shoots really, really nicely. Good piece of glass. Let's get a little bit more economic though. This is yet another Palmetto State Armory. This is a PA-65, an AR-10, but 6.5 Creedmoor. And once again, I added some Magpul furniture, but this one, I actually already made a video titled a uh, long range AR-10 setup for under $2,000. And it was like just over $1,600. It was so, so economical. I'm talking the optic and everything. At the time I was rocking the Arkin Optic SH4 Gen 2, which is a sweet optic, six to 24. Well, they're out with their EP5 now, as you may have seen from my review of the optic when I was shooting the M1A EBR. It's also got an adjustable gas block. This one comes with a Geisley trigger actually, although the Palmetto State's nice. This one could have been had for about $1,050, and I still might be that way when they're in stock, but $1,050. This is the Arkin Optic EP5. This is a 5 to 25 by 56. If you didn't see that full reveal, I'll spare you some of the info on it. I guess I'll just blast it real quickly on screen. Um, unbelievable optic. The optic with the bubble, the throw lever, the caps, and the 34 millimeter mount, under $600. Um, so that's pretty cool. This is a Mossberg MVPLR. My first rifle ever, ever. The first video on the channel was with the Mossberg MVP LR. And unfortunately I sold it uh, years, years back and I wish I didn't. But that one was chambered in 5.56. This one now is in 6.5 Creedmoor. So yeah, Mossberg MVP LR. Pretty interesting, a bolt action with a nice stock with a comb height adjustment. Uh, it takes AR-10 mags and M1A mags, interestingly enough. So that's pretty cool. Comes fluted, bolt and barrel. Comes threaded, so OSS hooks work break on there, so I'm gonna swap the cans from the uh, 6.5 AR-10. Put it back onto this, so we're gonna run this suppressed as well. Anyway, the rain seems to be calming down, thank goodness, because it was like crazy when I was trying to sight these things in off camera. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and initially set up at 525 yards. All right, starting out with the 308 PSA, PA-10. I was gonna load more, but whatever. We'll just save it for the further ranges. Oh man, barely left, I think. Oh, 
Oh, the Texas plinking curse of missing the last one in the mag. All right, we're gonna end on a good note. All right, we've got the 65 Creedmoor AR. 770, I'm gonna go with 5.6, no wind for now. See what happens. Barely right, I'm gonna hold left. Some info I forgot to mention on the Mossberg MVP LR and 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, I bought this one used recently, even brand new. They're pretty cheap. I see them on Gunbroker all the time, brand new for well under a grand. They're like, I don't even know, maybe 800 bucks. Not, I don't know, but I paid about just a tick under 600 for this one. Barely low, just a little left there. Let me actually load some rounds in the mag. I think I hit on the left edge of that. I'm gonna hold right edge, I could be wrong. Look better. Whoa. Talk about a flyer, what in the hell happened there? All right, well, we got 950 yards available, so let's just spend some time out there. Let's see how we get on at 950 yards. Ah, uh, just over the left shoulder, our left. It's gonna hold bottom left, or bottom right. Nice. Oh, I like how audible that is with no wind. Yeah, that was a headshot, and I totally meant for that. Who's doing it? I think it stacked it. Let's see if I could buck the curse of the last round. Nice. All right, dude. That is sick. Well, it's a fairly brief look at three different fairly economic rifles, uh, some more economic than others. For example, the optic on the FDE AR-10 is enough to buy this entire setup uh, and then still have some cash left over. If you're gonna do an economic build, uh, it's it's just got nothing to do with how much you're spending, but more so like the feature set. Same with optics, you know, it's not about how much you spend on the optic, but the feature set that's there. And if you saw any video I made with the Arcanoptic EP5, uh, they are loaded up. I think I kind of blasted some info a little earlier in this video. So yeah, um, but yeah, I won't oversell you guys on them just for transparency. Arcanoptics is cool with me. I am an affiliate with them. So if you buy it using my coupon code, Texas Plinking, that's cool, but it generally saves you like 160 or $170 when you buy the scope with a combo pack. So that being said, what's the math on that? Um, I think let's just round up with tax, shipping, transfer fee. Let's just say I spent 700 on the rifle. 
If you buy it new, it's probably like 100 or two more than that. Seven plus six here, plus 100 on the bipod. Yeah, you can start to see how that's a pretty darn cool package for the money. And it was doing really, really well at, you know, 950 yards. Maybe we'll show it go a little bit further pretty soon. But hey, it's pretty fun shooting it as a throwback. Since I have you guys here, let's close out the video with something totally unrelated. I'll keep the info pretty brief on this because it'll be either the next video or the one after that. But in June, certainly. So stand by for that. That was supposed to be cool. Zenith ZF5. Look out for a video on that pretty soon. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.